The Salantan gave us instructions. Push all of the coffins together, then leave another two and put them on top of the others and put another coffin on top of them. We did what it says and discovered we had built ourselves a staircase out of coffins. The Salantan turned to us and said, Watch carefully. With that stood flapping around its bones, it clambered up over the coffins until it was standing on top on the top one. It stretched up its skeletal arms and grasped the opening where the floor had once been. See easy, you see. It hoisted itself from the depths and looked down at us. Follow me, it called, buttoning with her long bony fingers. I went first, climbing carefully onto the coffins, desperately hoping their lips wouldn't split in two. By the time I reached the top coffin, I could easily haul myself out of the hole and into the vault above. There was just enough floor left to stand on. Dixie followed and finally Charles. He hoisted himself out of the hole and clambered out into the vault peering back down at the old coffins. He let out a cheer. So much for the dead, let's go home. The Salantan shot him a glance. Don't mock the dead, young man. There are those among us who mean no harm to the living. If you follow me, I'll make, I will take you to the dead. We step out of the old vault back into the graveyard. The graves were still open. But all the fires had gone out. The graveyard was quiet, bathed in the moonlight. Nothing stirred. The Salantan stuffed along the path. I edged along behind it, my heart in my mouth. In the distance, the graveyard gate came into view. I could hear Dixie and Charles crunching trun along the gravel behind me. We had taken only a few paces. Paces when three dark shapes moved out from beneath a tree, and a voice called to us, trick or treat.